Hello, YouTube. So I want to make a video on the classic wine nerd problem of what wine do you pair with spicy food? Um, lots of people are, are sort of wine fans out there, enjoy drinking wine with their with their meals. Um, and they're also fans of, you know, uh, South Asian cuisine, uh, island cuisine, you know, different regions of, of, of Chinese cuisine, you know, you name it, that happen to be very, very spicy. So what wines do you um, use in, in that scenario if you want to drink it with your food? Um, so a lot of people, you know, love big red wines. Here, here's one of my favorites. This is a field ben, uh, blend from uh, Ridge. This isn't going to work um, because uh, spicy food and tannins, which are sort of characteristic of red wines, do not get well, um, do not get along well together. Um, they tend to get very bitter and not nice. Uh, so we're going to take this out of consideration. Um, still a very great, you know, terrific wine, especially if you get um, three, four years on it. Um, so what about lighter white wines or red wines, um, right? Uh, so for example, we could try a Beaujolais. This is a Milan Avon in a lighter style. Um, the problem is this doesn't really, uh, this is better, but you're still going to have the, the tannins problem. Even if it's, there's just a little bit of tannins there, something about Something about tannin seems to not sit well with very spicy food. Um, so we move on to, uh, I mean, you, can, you could do a rosé or something, right? But that's more moving on to, to white wine territory, which is kind of making my point. <clears throat> okay. So what about white wines, right? Uh, what about a big, big white wine? Um, well, the problem is, uh, so I have a big oaky Chardonnay. It's not even that oaky. This is actually kind of nice. Um, it's, it's pretty balanced. Um, the problem is, uh, spicy food doesn't seem to like, um, oak much better than it likes tannins. Um, so this is, this is also going to clash a little bit. Uh, so let's take that out as well. So the standard recommendation is go with an unoaked, uh, white wine or rosé, um, in a lighter style, often with a little bit of sugar on it. That's usually the go-to pairing for spicy food. Um, the problem is I wouldn't really consider that a pairing. It's more like giving up in a sense. Um, what I mean is, is, uh, what you're saying is I'm just going to set a wine there. You know, you could also say just have a beer or something that, that works fine, but the spicy food is just going to run right over, you know, the beer or the, the light wine or whatever. I mean, the best option you have would be something like a big old Gewürztraminer, which is about as big as white wines get, um, you know, outside of, uh, well, as big as white wines, as white wines get. Um, uh, this is a very nice example. This is uh, Gunlak Bunshu from California. This is my favorite California uh, Gewurz. Um, but even this is just going to get run over by spicy food. The problem is that spicy food tends to be very big food, right? Um, so in order to get like a, a pairing with that, that isn't just, you know, the food running right over the whatever you're drinking with it, something where, where the two actually complement each other, you, you need to have a big uh, wine or a big beverage, something like that. Um, and the trouble is, like, what is that? Because because usually when we think of big wines, we think of red wines, right? And red wines don't really work. So what you need is a, a wine that's big but structured in an entirely different way from a red, red wine. So what, uh, what what is that? What fits that slot? What I've got here is uh, Lustau uh, Los Arcos uh, Amontillado. This is the cheapest uh, Amontillado um, in my city, which is Chicago. And this, uh, it's, it's, my, it's my house sherry. Um, you know, most of the time I would, I would go with uh, something a little bit nicer, but this is, this is really serviceable, actually. It's, it's about 15 bucks around here. And the nice thing about these is you can just stuff them back in the fridge um, for a long time. Um, and not have to finish the bottle. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit. Well, let's talk about the food I got here first. This is um, this is uh, 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 from Dongpo Impression, which is my favorite restaurant in Chicago at the moment. It's like it's, it's like Sichuan street food. This thing is like, this is um, the salt miners beef they call it. It's basically basically like a beef stew that's that's like just smothered in tobanjan. It's the the hot bean paste that they, they use over there. Um, and it's absolutely terrific. 
I think there's some turnips, some some other stuff in here too. Um, um, so it's a, it's a big big meal is, is what I'm getting at. Um, okay, so Sherry, um, I think people misunderstand Sherry because they think uh, initially it's it's going to be sweet, like you know it's like port, um, it's a dessert wine. That's not right. Um, sherry is is fortified like port, like um, Madeira and a couple of other examples. But most sherry is actually dry. So let's leave out um, uh, the sweet sherries are going to be the um, the Muscatel and the Pedro Jimenez um, and things with those blended in. So if you see those on the label, it's sweet. If you see cream on the label or sometimes medium on the label, anything, um, um, th that's that's an indication that the, it's got some sweet stuff blended in. But most of the stuff, in, in, if you've got a good sherry section in your store, um, is going to be dry. Uh, we're also going to leave out of consideration um, uh, uh, sherry's... Um, wh what you want here is a sherry made in oxidative style. So I have to sort of explain, back up a little. Um, how is sherry made, at least the, in a, you know dry sherries? Okay, this starts out life as a white wine, um, the Palomino grape in southwest Spain. Um, and the, the, the method of, of making a sherry is you put it in a barrel, right? You lightly fortify it with a little bit of brandy. Um, but you, you don't fill the barrel all the way. You leave a little bit of air up top. And normally um, in wine, that's, that's bad news because it's going to oxidize, right? Um, and your wine's going to go bad. Um, uh, but with sherry, that's, that's kind of the point. But we'll get to that in a minute. Now, um, if you're making a, a sherry in what's called a fino style, um, which is the, the sort of the style that's closer to a traditional white wine, um, you'll also see manzanillas out there or, or manzanilla fio, fino. That's that's uh, same style. Um, those are sherries where um, they're in the barrel, right? But there's a layer of this stuff called floor, um, which is this kind of gross, organic-y gunk that forms over top of the of the wine and sort of protects it from immediate contact with the oxygen. So it, it oxidizes at a much, much uh, slower rate. Um, uh, and this became sort of popular more recently, but like, like a century ago. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's great with tapas, it's great with sushi. That's what Fino is for. It's, 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 um, it's the style of sherry that's closer to a regular white wine. But um, then there's sherries which are which are aged with sort of direct exposure to the oxygen. Um, so so you got in that list um, the the uh, um, olorosos, the um, pelacotados, and the um, montiados. Okay, so um, the montiado is is what happens when the sherry ages for part of its life underneath the floor, right? Then at some point they they add more brandy. They oxidize. They um, uh, fortify it higher. The uh, the floor dies, and then it ages the rest. Of the, the 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 wine ages for the rest of its life, oxidatively. Um, so it picks up all the all these funky notes. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, the uh, uh, oloroso is the one where it's fortified immediately. Uh, uh, the floor is killed off, never or never forms, and it just ages its entire lifespan. Um, in that style. The Palo Cotado is the romantic one that everyone loves, which is where it, it's sort of intended to be a Fino or even a, a Montiolado sometimes, but uh, the f for, it just decides to shed its floor or the floor never forms properly. So they have to sort of rush in and immediately fortify it and treat it as if it had been an, an, an Oloroso. Um, those are great. Los Tal makes a, um, like a pretty cheap entry level Palo Cotado, which is great. It's kind of... Um, um, it's one of my go-tos, anyways. Um, so this is an Amontillado, which is sort of the, the, you know, it's not it's not a light wine. This is what, 18.5 percent alcohol, big boy, um, but it's the one that's it's uh, the style that's that's uh, of the oxidized sherry that's that's going to be kind of the lightest. Um, oh, okay, so. When you smell a sherry, what you're getting is um, it's, it reminds you of a white wine that's gone bad. Um, it's got these funky fruit notes. It's also got these sort of raisiny notes. 
um, a little bit of the alcohol comes through. Um, it's like a, maybe like you had a shot, add a shot of vodka, like a shot of vodka or something in there. Um, and it's a little bit of like nutshell in there as well. Uh, maybe a little of like motor oil or something. This is not a style most people are going to get into drinking on its own, but on the palate, From the nose, you could think this is going to be really sweet because it has that sort of dried fruit note. It's actually sort of incredibly dry. Um, the, the the raisininess, the sort of golden raisin aspect, is there, but there's no sugar. Instead, you're getting, you know, um, a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of um, kind of funky fruit again, um, like you know. You're, 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 you opened your compost up and, you know, just grab some out and, and put it in your mouth. Um, a little bit of nuttiness. Uh, this is not something that is, is sort of in most people's um, preferred style these days. But the thing is, it's a big wine. It has no tannins, right? Because it's, it's, it's a kind of mutant white wine. Um, so, um, Let's see what it does with the salt miner's beef. All right, I'm going to eat this. Yeah. Oh, God, that's good. Okay. Delicious. Sherry on its own is a little bit difficult. I think <laughs> I, I'm used to this stuff now, because now that I've um, had a lot of it. But most people, it's going to be a little bit of shock initially. But... With the spicy food, yeah, they're not getting in each, in each other's way. They're actually building on each other. So let me try that one more time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the spice is still center stage, right? But the effect of the sherry is just makes this halo of sort of beautiful fruitiness around this sort of gigantic, you know, spicy um, bean paste bomb. Um, you got to try this. I don't. It doesn't matter really what what spicy food you like. Um, can be if you're into Mexican, if you're into you know West African, um, Jamaican. You know, it doesn't you know. South America, doesn't really matter. This is just a terrific killer pairing. Like the spicy food is trying to, you know, dominate and take over your whole mouth. And the sherry is just going to say, no, 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 I'm a, I'm a big boy. I can, I, I can, I'm going to fight back. And we're going to have to stare, uh, 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 share the stage a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, even if you even if you're not a fan of sherry on its own, this is definitely worth trying. Um, this is a food wine. Um, it can give you the impression because it's so fruity that it's going to be nice on its own. But this is really built to to go with certain kinds of food. Like traditionally, you know, uh, cheese. This is a huge cheese wine, or nuts or other things like that. You know, um, sort of uh, old. 18th century stuff like that. But my God, does it pair well with spicy food. Um, and, and it sort of go, gets better from here, right? This is 15 bucks. Um, and that's kind of all I got. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this was, was informative. Cheers.